My name is Orianella and I'm back in with another video. So as some of you on many of the servers know, there's this thing called map art. So it's relatively new to Terra because until Woolamater, Chesty I think is their end game name, moved to Terra, we didn't really have any map artists. So when they moved to Terra, it kind of inspired me to look into what does it take to make map art because honestly I think map art is super cool and I've always been kind of sad by the lack of map art Terra has because like some servers like Era, Moon, Arch, probably all the rest of you guys out there, you have a ton of map artists, but Tara, we've never really had any. So I've been looking into and researching how to do map art, and I've came across some really easy ways to do it. For those of you out there who think it's super cool, but like think that it looks way too complicated for you to do, it's not actually too complicated for you to do. It's actually like super simple if you know what you're doing, and you don't go over complicated. Now some of the ones that are like super complicated and super shaded and like look like this realistic human face. Those can be super complicated. But if you want to just do basic map art, <laughs> it's really easy to do. So I'm going to show you today how to do that. So I'm going to have a whole bunch of links down in the description that will link you to everything you need to get set up to make map art. So first you decide what you're going to do. So like for my first one, I wanted it to be basic. So I picked this dragon here. Um, I'll show you the original file of it. Um... Okay, so here it is. So the first thing you want to do is you want to pick something relatively simple. So, because things that are that have a whole heap of colors that you can get to turn out looking super good, but it's going to have to be a massive map. I mean, okay, I personally don't have enough patience to quite do like a full like 16 map art thing. So yeah, and you might be wondering, but like, you might be thinking right now, but I've seen some single map arts that are super, super detailed. Those are probably zoomed out maps. Because, like, one map, like this, this, like this one that I've done here is one map area. It's 128 by 128 blocks, which is over 16,000 blocks in there, which takes a whole ton of time to lay 16,000 carpets if you're just working with carpets. And if it's a flat map. What most people do for, like, the super complicated maps that are one, that are one map block, they'll zoom the map out. Each time you zoom the map out, it, it, it expands it by like, I don't know how to quite to explain it. You zoom one map, you zoom the map out once, it'll equal four maps. So, so if one, so, so one map that's zoomed out once will be equal to four non-zoomed out maps, if you know what I mean, a two by two square. And if you zoom it out again, then it's equal to a three by three square, if that makes sense. So now we'll do some simple math there. And if one map takes that many blocks, one zoomed out map times four will take that many blocks. And like, if it's like, uh, if it's still, still some map artist that'll do larger map pieces, that'll be like maybe a two by three map, but it still looks super detailed. We'll do like, it'll be six single zoomed out maps. So like, let's say we're doing a two by three piece times that by six. That's a ton of work. So like, if you all are wondering why map art's so expensive by some people, it's it takes a ton of time, and it's not easy to do, especially because most of the people who do super super detailed stuff will do what's called three dimensional maps, which will be like all zigzaggy and up in the air and all not flat. I work with flat because it's easy, <laughs> and I don't feel like spending two weeks on one 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 art. So I'm just, I'm just not, don't have that amount of patience. But anyway, so first you need to pick something you want to do. Kind of simple. Um, and, and sometimes the first thing you pick will not quite look like how you want when you plug it into the program. So sometimes you have to poke around a little bit. So, oh, I forgot. I wanted to make an announcement. I realized on the, my, you see here I'm on the Mindland website, the Warden website. They've updated the rule list to include a list of mods that are okay. And in that is better PvP. I know that's been a big controversial issue. Some people think that the better PvP minimap can get you banned. But like here, it specifically says it can't. Which is like super awesome because the better PvP minimap is super OP in, in PvP. So it does. Uh, you realize it does not say fair play. It says the actual better PvP. So that's cool. So 
the first thing you need to do is you need to install the fabric mod loader if you don't already run it because sadly the mod that I found that works best with this is only fabric and not forge which I personally prefer forge but anyway if you don't have fabric get fabric up and running 15.2 because mine one's 15.2 and then you need to install this mod Litematica. I'll have it linked down in the description and to get Litematica to run here oh, it was right in front of me okay so to get Lithomatica to work, you also need this mod here, the mal whatever library mod to go with it, which is pretty easy. So you just you download Lithomatica, and download this library mod, put them both into your mod folders, and have fabric fabric ready to run, and you got the mods that you need. So now what we're going to do is I have another link down in the description that's going to link you to this website. So how this website works is it's pretty cool. So you pick which blocks you have like a crap ton of, and like, I personally, the carpets are the easiest, because, like, especially in mine when you have all that wool and spawn. So wool is relatively easy to get. And dyes aren't too hard to get in a server. You can generally trade for them in large numbers from other players. So the more colors you add, the better. I generally add in quartz slabs, too, because you can get quartz easy at um, Slash Warp Castle, as many of you know. And I'll generally add in the woods and the nether bricks and the lapis. So basically the more you, you add, the more detailed your picture will be. D don't do normal ice, because if you use normal ice, then you're like stuck working in an ice biome. Otherwise it's going to melt, and we don't want to do that. So just use the packed ice, if it happens to want it in your thing. So we're going to we're gonna add all those, because those are, to me, the easiest blocks to get in mine one. So sometimes you want to add in diamond to like add in extra highlights. And blocks of diamonds you can get sometimes in mine one not too hard, but generally if it's telling me it wants over 100 blocks of diamond, I generally chuck that. So, and now you're going to upload the image that you wanted to do. So, downloads. Um, this is personally the next one that I'm going to be working on. And Tara, so you upload it like that. And you see how it's all smushed. So first you want to click the crop which means it'll crop your image instead of smushing it. So, and this is a one by one map. You see here it says one by one. Oh, and you always want to make sure you have the version set right. 15.1 works fine at 15.2 as far as I've been able to tell. And, but I want it to go up one. So I'm going to change this to one by two. And it's got to think a moment. And so here's a one by two one. If I wanted to be more detailed, I could like make it a, I could like double that. Make it a two by four. So the bigger your the bigger the map size you're working with, the longer it takes to think about each thing that you click. So like if I wanted it to be super detailed, I could do it like that. But I'm not that much into detail. So I'm just gonna like oops. Do that. Because I'd rather it be quick and easy. And honestly, this one doesn't look too much different as a one by two versus a two by four. And now you click materials. And it'll give you an it'll give you an idea of what materials it's gonna take. So like scrolling down through here, you yeah, can see the bulk of it is carpets. I and and you can decide whether you think you can get that many of what it wants. So like I'm in mine one, so I'm pretty certain I can get that many quartz slabs. The stone's easy to get. Hmm. Now like for instance, if like I was like I don't fancy 430 packed dice. I can come up here and remove it, and it'll recalculate it without the pack dice. So I removed it, and it honestly doesn't look much different without the pack dice. And I don't like having to try to get 430 pack dice. So I'm going to reboot the material list. I like that way better. So all these materials in the list I think I can easily get. There's nothing insane like 2,000 diamond blocks. So I really like that. So and then I'm going to click download which I've already downloaded this NBT, so theoretically if you hadn't, you would click, you would now click download. Oh, wait, forgot a step. We turning staircasing off. Because if staircasing is on, it's going to be a three-dimensional map, and that takes like freaking forever to do. And I'm not doing that. So I'm turning staircasing off, so it's going to be a flat map. And now I click download. <laughs> so you download your NBT. It's going, I don't know exactly how to do this in Windows. Um, I'm sure those of you who work with mods know how to find your Minecraft library folder um, on Windows um, downloads. So basically it would download into your download file. Um, I named it Purple Fox. So here's where it would be. 
So you take it, and you come into your Minecraft folder, where you have all your mods and different stuff, screenshots. And if you've not ran Lidmatica at, at all yet, this folder won't exist. So just make it and name it Schematics. Make sure it's named exactly the same as you see here. Name it Schematics. Go in, and that's where you copy-paste your .mbts. So that's where you put your NBTs. And you can see here there's something else in this folder. I'll explain that in the next video, how to use Litmatica for other things. Because Litmatica can be used for so much more than just map art. But for now, we're just covering using it for map art. So I have my purple fox in the map art. I mean, in the schematics folder. And so now we go back into our, our place here, which is where we're going to want to put it. And I'm looking in the wrong view. There we go. So now I'm going to go over to where I've been working on this. So it's actually just over past this dragon one. So here we go. So as you can see, I've started laying black for it. So and how to find where to place it. See, now this is the difficult part. Because you don't want to place it where it's going to end up like half in one map and half in other. You want it where it lines up with the map specifically. So how you generally do that is you're going to take a map. And you're going to activate that. Oh, another thing, you want to work in the middle of an ocean biome. Ocean biomes, you have flat surface. You don't have to worry about leveling anything. And basically just put frost walker on your boots and place carpets on top of the ice. It goes super quick and easy. You don't have to worry about leveling anything. You just run around and place carpets on the ice from your frost walker boots. So you go somewhere out in the middle of great big ocean. You make your map. Ta-da! We have our map. But now we need to find the exact corners. So a trick to doing this, F3G, and ignore the dog playing with the squeaky toy. Harley, cut it out. I'm trying to record. Stop it, boy. So, and he's going to ignore me. So what I just did was F3 and G. So hold F3 and G, and you see it shows up the borders of the chunks. That's what that is. So each map is 16 chunks by 16 chunks. So we're, you look on the map until you look like you're about at the corner, and... You mark that block. See here we can see this is a corner of a chunk and according to our map this is the corner chunk in the map and so that's going to be our corner spot. So how the how the map NBTs work is they're a little they're a little buggy in one matter but it's not too easy. I mean it's not too hard to come past. Um, you go to the square right to the right above this corner chunk. See you see we're in the top left hand corner of our map and we jump down here one square down, one square down, because we want our map to be flush with ocean, so we can use our frost walker boots. And then you click M and P. M and P will bring up this menu here. You click loaded schematics. There's nothing loaded yet, so we click load schematics. The one we're working with is purple fox. You click it, and then you click load. Ta-da! And it creates basically a whole a hologram of what you want to do. So if you hover over it, it tells you exactly what what block has to go there. And you can see where you've been working to. And if you click, and if you put the wrong block in the wrong place, um, it'll tell you. And it'll turn, like, glowing red. So, like, I'll come up here where there's supposed to be a blue carpet. And I'll put a black carpet. Oh, no, I put the wrong carpet there. So, it's very helpful. It keeps it helps keep you on track. So, and then you just, and then it's just a lot of patience. Over time, slowly filling in the map. So, and then another trick on how maps work, maps, you don't have to be standing in the middle of where you want your map to be. That's, that's not how maps work, I found out. I've been messing around a lot with maps. So, basically, how maps work is there's this invisible grid in the Minecraft world already where maps are going to be. So, even if I, like, stand right here versus standing in the middle of this area, I'm going to get the same exact map area. Because maps are, like, it's already planned out, I guess, somehow in the Minecraft code how maps are going to be like which sections are going to be a map like down here is one map so I could be standing here or in the middle of my dragon and get the exact same map so that also makes it really easy to line up maps so like as you see with my purple dragon it's going to be a two by one map I mean purple fox not dragon so all I have to do is run past the border of this map and into and just a little bit past the border of this map and then activate that map and I'll have a map of the next section because maps are all made to automatically line up which I did not know that before. Some of you probably knew that before, but I didn't. So that's super cool. It makes it easy for lining up maps. So yeah, big ocean area. Use the right mods in the website. And map making, map art making can go pretty quick. 
So, but honestly though, it's still a lot of tedious work. Because like, even though it's a flat map, <laughs> like this was 16,000 carpets. This took me hours to lay this many carpets. Not to mention gathering the materials and buying black dye off of like everybody in the server that had black dye. So, yeah. <laughs> so many map artists I've heard dupe carpets, but that's dangerous because technically that can get you banned from mine went. I have heard of carpet dupers getting banned. I mean, technically they probably have to catch you for that, and I don't know how they exactly catch you with that. But, yeah. Ma carpet dupe at your own risk, basically. So, yeah, I hope this helped you a lot. And, yeah, I'll, I'll answer any questions you have. And, yeah, hope you all have fun making more map art. And there's a stupid phantom that wants to kill me. Anyway, I think I'm going to be gone for now. Have fun making map art. Bye, guys.